Have you ever gotten home from work and realized it was clear, even though everything said it was supposed to be cloudy? Or what about going out to a remote location away from home, but when you get there, you have no idea what you're gonna image? Or what about it being just a little bit chilly, even though the forecast called for it being 70 degrees Fahrenheit, nice and comfortable? Well, in this video, we're gonna go over the five different things that I do to prepare for a night of imaging. So the first thing we're gonna go over is the weather. Now, it seems kind of obvious that we have to watch the weather, but we really do need to watch it like a hawk. We almost need to become amateur meteorologists to make sure that we have a good night out when we're imaging. Now, personally, I check the weather pretty much daily, and it's not just for astronomy and astrophotography, it's also so I know how my commute's gonna go. But specifically for astrophotography and astronomy, I check my backyard and both observatories here in Pittsburgh. And that's because in a straight line distance, those observatories are 30 miles apart. And every now and then we'll get a clear night at one, but not at the other. So it's a good idea to have a few different locations close to home that you can go to. I also watch a few other spots that are a few hours from home, and this will help with the next tip, which we'll get to in a minute. Now, when I'm watching either the local news or checking weather.com or AccuWeather, what I'm looking for is mainly the words mostly clear or a few clouds or something that's indicating it's gonna be pretty much clear. And from there, what I do is I shift into the apps. Now, I've already made a video about the apps I use, but right now I currently use clear outside, clear sky chart, Astrospheric, windy.com, and then I check the National Weather Service's website as well. Now, if they all agree, it's pretty much gonna be a great night at that location. And speaking of location, if you're traveling, you definitely should know a little bit about where you're going. So the things you might need to know are things like if you have electricity on site, if there's any cell service in the area, just in case you need to make a call, if there's a nearby gas station or restaurant, in case you need to visit one of those, and the big one is make sure you have permission to access the site if it's it's just some random field out in the middle of nowhere. And if at all possible, one thing you definitely want to do is if you can, add the landscape to Stellarium. That way it can help you out with the next thing, which is knowing where things are gonna be at in the sky. Now there are a ton of resources out there, and a good place to start is this book, The 100 Best Astrophotography Targets. Now this book gives a monthly rundown of the best night for certain objects. For example, I'm recording this the week of January 24th, and this Saturday is January 29th. The weekends are typically what I have to work with, so let's see what's good then. And I'll go to the table of contents. Oop. January 29th, the Orion Nebula. All right, so January 29th is the Orion Nebula and Running Man Nebula. And yeah, that night you get some pretty good stuff. Hold on, let me see what the weather looks like that night. Okay, pretty clear. Ooh, it says it'll be clear there. Gonna be clear there. Hmm, sounds like a good night to get the ASI Air Plus going with the DSLR. What do you think? So the other thing you can do is check Stellarium to see exactly where it'll be in the night sky where you're going. So taking a look at Stellarium here at 6.30ish at Mingo, it will be pretty much in the southeast. And if we just let it go and keep scrolling forward, it'll set around 1.30ish, which is a great night of imaging. Lastly, on figuring out what objects are visible, one thing I highly recommend doing is learn when constellations are visible at each time of year. For me, it's easier to think about, well, when's the Orion constellation visible, or when's Leo visible, or when's Scorpius visible? That way I can go, oh, wait a minute. That constellation is visible at X time of year. And then when that time of year comes around, I can go, all right, well, that constellation is visible. Let's see what's good in there that I haven't gotten yet. So, for example, with Orion being visible right now, I know that it is visible at this time of year, around January. Well, then you can go from there. Well, Orion's visible. What's in Orion that I haven't gotten yet? You know, you could go for the Witch Head or the Horse Head or the Orion Nebula itself. Now, don't worry too much if you don't learn everything immediately overnight. A lot of this takes time, but as you learn it, it'll just get much easier to plan because you'll go, all right, well, this time of year, what's visible? This constellation, what's in that constellation? These 
objects. And then you plan from there based on what you have to work with. All right, and speaking of gear, this moves us into our next tip, and that is keeping your gear ready to go. It makes things super easy. Now, I recommend putting things in as few totes as possible. Now, of course, you're gonna wanna base this on your limitations. If you can't pick up something really heavy, then you might have to split it out into a couple totes. But if you really only have to grab one or two things, toss it in the car and go, that'll make things so much simpler. The other thing that can help is in those totes, if you store things a certain way, it can make setup and tear down a breeze. Now, the way that I do things now, it took setup from about 20 minutes to less than 10. Here's what I do. So for the main mount, I have a tote that I keep the HEQ5 body in with the spreader, and I also keep both power supplies. So the main 12 volt power that powers the mount and everything. And then I also keep my DSLR's AC adapter in here. It's the only time I ever use it, so it stays in this tote. The next thing I have also is the counterweight. Because my telescope setup is so small I don't need the full counterweight I have a little seven pounder that you can buy off a of Skywatcher. I have a little Tupperware in here that has all the small cables my USB cables my smaller power cables rubber bands and the tote also has adapters so like my t-ring adapter for the DSLR and all of the caps for my flattener and any other thing that might not be attached to the telescope at the time. Inside the tote I also have a t-shirt that I use for flats and and I keep any visual observing books and logs that I use just in case I bring my dog along with me. I can jot some notes down in observing logs. Now with this tote, when everything's in there, it kind of acts a little bit like foam. I've seen other setups where people will put the HEQ5 in foam in a tote. And I find that a little bit overkill because it takes up much needed room for other stuff. As long as the tote is packed kind of tightly, it won't have room to bounce around inside the tote. And as long as you drive carefully, it's not gonna bounce around in your car. I've never had a problem with it and I've never found anything has been shaken up too bad after putting it in the car and pulling it back out at the other side. The other case that I have is a hard shell foam case and this is where the sensitive stuff goes. So this is where my telescope is at and I store it with my ASI 294 attached to it. And I also have my guide camera and scope stored in here fully put together and fully focused. I never have to focus this camera, which removes so much time. It is ridiculous how much of a time saver storing it that way is. In the case, I also have the filters that I currently have. I have the ASI Air Plus, the flash drive for the ASIR Plus and the antenna for the Plus. Now I do keep a couple power cables in that case as well and that is purely to make it easy to find them. Now when it comes to other miscellaneous gear, camera batteries, if I'm not gonna be using the power supply, are pretty much always on the charger. I just leave them on the charger at home, that way they're ready to go for on the fly use. And that is pretty much for the DSLR, and I do use the DSLR for other things, so just having the batteries ready to run at any given time is a great idea. Now when it comes to the storage, like the flash drive, usually when I get done with a night of imaging, I think to myself, or I'm talking to somebody at the observatory or wherever I'm at, like, yeah, when I get home, I'm going to bed, but usually when I get home, I'm super excited, and I pull the storage and get it all transferred to my computer. Usually within the next day, all of the storage goes back in the case. That way I don't have to think about it until the next session. Onto the last tip here, the other big thing that you're gonna need to make sure that you have ready to roll at any given time is your clothing. Now you always wanna plan for it being colder than the weather calls for. So in step one, when you're checking the weather, if it says it's gonna be 70 degrees at night, yeah, it will, but with no sun beating on you, it's gonna feel a little bit chilly. So one thing I always recommend is always bring long sleeves with you no matter what. That way you just have them and you're good to go. And I always recommend at least wearing them even if it's a lightweight one just to help keep some bugs off of you because mosquitoes are friggin' annoying, right? Now when it comes to being in a field late at night and it gets a little bit dewy, you're still gonna wanna make sure you bring some footwear with you that is a little bit dew resistant. It just keeps you a little bit more comfortable so always wear something that is a little bit water resistant for your feet or quick drying, either or is fine. Now, of course, I'm shooting this in January in the Northern Hemisphere and it's pretty cold here. So a couple extra things you might wanna make sure you bring with you if it's cold is a nice thick coat that's gonna keep you warm and get some long johns or some kind of insulated underwear just to keep your legs warm. 
gonna want wool socks with synthetic sock liners. And what that'll do is if your feet do get a little bit sweaty from setup or tear down, the synthetics will wick the sweat away from your feet and then the wool will just soak it in and it'll dry a little bit easier. And that'll keep your feet nice and comfortable. And I definitely recommend having some mittens with you for your hands and whether they're the flip out style mittens or if they're the style where you wear a liner inside, that way you can take the mitten off and still do things. Either way, it keeps your hands nice and protected. One thing I didn't mention with the gear is your headlamp. Now, as I said with the other batteries, even the headlamp's batteries are constantly on the charger. And when I pack my clothes up, I throw the headlamp in the clothes bag that I bring with me with my extra layers of clothes. That way I know where it's at, but also so I know my headlamp is good to go. But other than that, the last thing you definitely want to do in your planning step is if you have to travel anywhere, just make sure somebody knows where you're going if you're going at it alone. It's just a good safety tip. Make sure that somebody knows where you are. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, and then maybe consider subscribing. I want to thank you for watching. Clear skies.